Hey guys, welcome to Budget Commander. On this week's episode, we have a Gave Guru of Spores deck tech at a $100 budget for one of our listeners, Nigel from Facebook. All prices in this video are sponsored by TCG Player. If you use the link in the description below to buy singles, accessories, or the deck in this video, it'll help support our channel and help us create future content. If you haven't already subscribed or commented on any of our videos, we are running a contest to give away the Muldrotha the Grave Tide deck that we brewed a few weeks ago. All you have to do is subscribe to our channel or comment on any of our videos for an entry to win. This contest does end on March 31st and we will set up a live stream after the contest ends to determine a winner. Gave Guru of Spores is two, a white, a black, and a green for a legendary creature, Fungus Shaman. Gave Guru of Spores enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. Pay one, remove a plus one plus one counter from a creature you control, create a one one green sapperling creature token. And then you could pay one to sacrifice a creature, put a 1 1 counter on target creature. This Gave deck is going to rely heavily on an Aristocrats theme. There's a lot of sacrifice outlets in this deck and a lot of ways to ping your opponents when you sacrifice creatures. It does have a fungus sub theme built into it. Since Gave is a fungus, there are a lot of fungus creatures that work out really well. Gave also works out really well with plus one plus one counters, so we did include some of those cards in the deck. This Gave deck is an all-in combo deck. There's a lot of redundancy in our combos, and you will be able to combo out with this deck fairly easily. The only problem is, is that this deck is weak to removing Gave. The price of this deck is $99.42 on TCG Player. The average CMC of this deck is 3.1. Now we do have a fungus sub theme in this deck and they do work out pretty well with Gabe because a lot of them have sacrifice abilities attached to them. So first up we have Thalid Omnivore, three in a black for a creature fungus, pay one, sacrifice another creature. Thalid Omnivore gets plus two plus two until end of turn. If a sapperling was sacrificed this way, you gain two life. So this does work out with Gabe as Gabe is able to make sapperlings, so you're able to sacrifice them to gain some life. Then we have Spore Crown Thalid, one in a green for creature fungus. Each other creature you control that's a fungus or sapperling gets plus one plus one. So if you're able to pump out some tokens with Gabe, all of your tokens will get plus one plus one and they'll be two twos. And then we have Thalid Soothsayer, three in a black for creature fungus. Pay two, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. This works out well with the Aristocrats style. And if you're able to generate infinite mana and tokens, which there are multiple ways in this deck of doing so, you are able to sacrifice those creatures to draw cards and, and churn through your deck to find your win con. And then we have Death Spore Thalid. One in a black for a creature zombie fungus. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on Death Spore Thalid. Remove three spore counters from Death Spore Thalid. Put a 1 1 green sapperling creature token into play. Sacrifice a sapperling. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. There there are a few combos in this deck where we're able to make infinite tokens. So with a Death Spore Thalid on the battlefield, you are able to sacrifice those Sapperling tokens to wipe your opponent's boards and get rid of all their threats. And then we have Slimefoot the Stowaway. One a black and a green for a legendary creature Fungus. Whenever a Sapperling you control dies, Slimefoot the Stowaway deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. And then you can pay four to create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature token. Slimefoot is great in two ways, in that it's able to help you create sapperling creatures, and then anytime a sapperling you control dies, it's also going to ping your opponents. And there are a lot of ways in this deck where you're able to abuse Slimefoot's first ability. There are several ways to create infinite tokens in this deck, and with the sack outlet on the board, you are just going to win right on the spot. Sack outlets are essential in this deck since we are playing an Aristocrats theme. So first up we have Vesira Seer, one black mana for a vampire wizard, sacrifice a creature, scry one, and then we have Carrion Feeder, one black mana for a zombie, Carrion Feeder can't block, sacrifice a creature, put a plus one plus one counter on Carrion Feeder. Now with both of these cards we are just looking for a free sack outlet that enables a lot of our combos in this deck, so we're not really looking to use the abilities on here, although Vesira Seer's ability is pretty strong. Another card that works out really well in this deck and is a new one out of the set Ravnica Allegiance is Tesa Karlov. Two, a white and a black for legendary creature, human advisor. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. And then creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. With Tesa, you're able to double up on all of your death triggers, which we do have a lot of in this deck, and it works out really well with Gave. And then creature tokens you control have Vigilance and Lifelink. We do have a lot of token makers in this deck, so if you're not able to win through your combos, you can always 
turn your tokens sideways and gain some life when they attack. Tesa is a really strong card and is a really strong commander. And we do have a deck tech on Tesa. So if you're interested, see below in the show notes and we'll put that deck down there. It is a really powerful deck too for under $100. One of the best single cards in this deck is definitely Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is one generic mana for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, minus one. Whenever a equipped creature dies, draw two cards, and you can equip it for one mana. Skull Clamp is a great card, as you do have a lot of tokens and 1-1s one in this deck that you're able to equip your Skull Clamp to them to draw you two cards, which is extremely powerful and one of the most powerful cards in the entire game of Magic. Next up, I want to call it a card that is an enabler if you're able to make infinite tokens and mana. So we have Mentor of the Meek, two and a white for a creature human soldier. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card. So if you're able to make infinite mana and tokens, which we do have multiple ways in this deck of doing, you are able to draw your entire deck if you have your Mentor of the Meek on the battlefield. And then once you draw your deck, you're able to find your win cons to win the game. Powerful card in this deck that I want to highlight is Fecundity. It's two and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. Now with Gave, there are going to be a lot of creatures dying in this deck. So having a Fecundity hit the battlefield means that you're going to be drawing a lot of cards that's going to help you churn through your deck and find your combo pieces. There are quite a few combos in this deck. And the first one I want to call out is an infinite damage combo that involves Gave, Ashnod's Altar, and Jeralf's Messenger. So Ashnod's Altar is three colorless for an artifact. Sacrifice a creature, add two colorless to your mana pool. This is a combo enabler for a lot of our combos that we're going to go over in this deck. And then we have Jeralf's Messenger. Black, black, black for a creature. Jeralf's Messenger enters the battlefield tapped. When Jeralf's Messenger enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two life, and it has Undying. When this creature dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So the way this works is, if you have these three on the battlefield, what you're going to do is you're going to sacrifice your Jeralf's Messenger to your Ashnod's Altar, which is going to give you two colorless mana. And then your Jeralf's Messenger is going to enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, and then you can target an opponent to lose two life. With your Gave on the battlefield, you're able to pay one mana to remove the plus one plus one counter from Jeralf's Messenger to create a one one green sapperling creature token. And then you're able to sack your Jeralf's Messenger again to the Ashnod's Altar to bring it back again with Undying. And this is an infinite loop that's going to generate infinite damage to your opponents, as well as infinite colorless mana and infinite tokens. The next infinite damage combo I want to call out is... One that involves Karmic Guide, Gray Merchant, and Revelark. So Karmic Guide is three white white for a creature that has flying, protection from black, and echo. When Karmic Guide enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then Gray Merchant is three black black for a creature that has, when Gray Merchant enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. And then we have Revelark, four and a white for a creature, flying. When Revelark leaves the battlefield, return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it does have a Voke for five and a white. Now the way this works is if you have these three creatures on the battlefield and a sacrifice outlet, you are able to sacrifice your Karmic Guide and your Gray Merchant to the sacrifice outlet, and then you could sacrifice Revelark, and when Revelark is sacrificed, it's going to return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you would return the Karmic Guide and the Gray Merchant to the battlefield. And then Karmic Guide, when it enters, it's going to return the Revelark back to the battlefield. So you're able to repeat this process infinite times to drain your opponents with the Gray Merchant. This does work with other creatures in the deck as well. If you have Zulaport Cutthroat on the battlefield, you don't even need the Gray Merchant. You could just repeat this loop with just the Karmic Guide and the Revelark. And this does also work if you have Karmic Guide in your hand and you have Gray Merchant and Revelark in your graveyard. You're able to play the Karmic Guide and return the Revelark back to the battlefield, which will return the, the Gray Merchant. And then you're able to just start the loop over again. The next combo I want to go over is one that's going to create you infinite death triggers and infinite enter the battlefield triggers for your creatures. So first up we have Safi Eric's daughter, a green and a white for legendary creature human scout. You can sacrifice it when target creature is put into your graveyard from play this turn, return that card to play. And then we have Sun Titan, four white white for a creature giant. Vigilance. Whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
Now the way this works is you do need to have a sacrifice outlet on the board, which we do have quite a few of in this deck. And what you're gonna do is if you have both of these creatures on the battlefield, you can sacrifice your Safi to target the Sun Titan. And when that Sun Titan is put into the graveyard from play this turn, you're gonna return that card to play. And then you can sacrifice your Sun Titan and it's gonna come back to play and, and return your Safi Eric's Daughter back to the battlefield. If you have Zulaport Cutthroat or Altar of the Brood out at the same time, you are gonna win the game right on the spot with this because your creatures are gonna have infinite ETB and death triggers. Your Zulaport Cutthroat's gonna have infinite drains for your opponents and your Altar of the Brood is gonna mill your opponents if you have that out as well. And we'll go over all the win cons in this deck later on in the video. Next game I wanna talk about is a way that we're able to generate infinite life with Kitchen Finks, any sacrifice outlet, and then any creature or enchantment that's gonna make our creatures enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. First up, we have Cathar's Crusade. Three white white for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This does substitute with Juniper Order Ranger or Ivy Lane Denizen. And then we have Ashnod's Altar. Three colorless for an artifact. Sacrifice a creature, add colorless colorless to your mana pool. This will substitute with any other free sacrifice outlet. If you do use Ashnod's Altar, you will get infinite colorless mana with this combo as well. And then we have Kitchen Finks. One hybrid green white, hybrid green white for a creature. When Kitchen Finks enters the battlefield, you gain two life, and then it has persist. When this creature dies, if you had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. So the way that this works is you would sacrifice your Kitchen Finks to any of your sacrifice outlets, and it's going to return to the battlefield with a persist trigger to enter with a minus one, minus one counter. Now, if you have Cathar's Crusade, Juniper Order, Ranger, or Ivy Lane Denizen, it is going to also enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter. So it is going to enter with a plus one, plus one, and a minus one, minus one counter, which those two offset and it is going to enter the battlefield with no counters on it and then you're able to continue this loop infinitely to gain infinite life and like i said if you have the ashnod's altar you will also gain infinite colorless mana as well this next combo is a way that we're able to steal all creatures from all graveyards and the way this works is with Juniper Order Ranger or Cathar's Crusade, Ashnod's Altar or any free sacrifice outlet, and then Puppeteer Click. So Puppeteer Click is three black black for a creature fairy wizard with flying. When Puppeteer Click enters the battlefield, put target creature card for an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. At the beginning of your next end step, exile it. And it has persist. When this creature dies, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. When the puppeteer click is sacrificed, it's going to return back to the battlefield with persist, and then the persist is going to give it a minus one, minus one counter. But the Juniper Order Ranger and the Cathar's Crusade is going to give it a plus one, plus one counter. So those two are going to offset, and your puppeteer click is going to enter with no counters on it, and you're able to continue this loop infinitely with any sacrifice outlet on the battlefield. The next combo I want to talk about is a way that we're able to make infinite mana and tokens. And the way you're able to accomplish this is with a Gave, Ashnod's Altar, and then Bloodspore Theranax with a plus one, plus one counter. Or you can use Cathar's Crusade, Ivy Lane Denison, or Juniper Order Ranger. So the way this works is if you have these three permanents on the battlefield, you're able to remove a plus one, plus one counter for Gave with one colorless mana, which is gonna create a one, one green sapperling creature token. And then with one of the plus one, plus one counter producers on the battlefield, it's gonna enter with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it's gonna be a two, two green sapperling creature token. And then you're able to remove the plus one, plus one counter from the sapperling to make another sapperling creature. And then you're able to sacrifice that one, one sapperling to Ashnod's altar to gain two colorless mana. And then you're just gonna continue this loop infinitely to have infinite mana because you're gonna net one off the Ashnard's altar each time and to have infinite sapling creatures. The next combo we're gonna talk about is another way to create infinite mana and tokens. And this combo uses Gave, Ashnard's altar, and Champion of Lamholt. So Champion of Lamholt is one green green for a creature human warrior. Creatures with power less than Champion of Lamholt's power can't block creatures you control. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Lamholt. You're going to remove a plus one plus one counter from Gave to create a one one green sapling creature token, which is going to give your Champion of Lamholt plus one plus one. And then you're going to sacrifice that creature to the Ashnod's altar to get two colorless mana. And you're going to use one of those colorless mana to remove the counter from Champion of Lamholt to create another Sapperling creature token. And then you're just going to loop this infinitely. And this is going to give you infinite colorless mana and infinite tokens. 
So for wind cons in this deck, we have three creatures that work out really well if we're able to have infinite death triggers or infinite ETB triggers. So first up, we have Blood Artist. One in a black for a creature vampire. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. And then we have Zulaport Cutthroat. One in a black for a creature human rogue ally. Whenever Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And then we have Poison Tip Archer. Two black green for a creature elf archer. It has reach and death touch. Whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. So with these creatures, if you're able to loop any of your combos in which your creatures are going to die and then come back, like with Undying or Persist, with plus one plus one counters or Gave, with one of these creatures on the battlefield, you are going to win the game right on the spot. Our last win con is Alter the Brood. It's one colorless mana for an artifact. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. If you have any of your ETB combos with this Alter the Brood on the battlefield, or any of your death triggers where you're able to recur your creatures infinitely you are going to win with Alter of the Brew because it's going to mill your opponents out right on the spot and you'll win when they go to draw their card on their next turn. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video today. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Reddit. We'll see you next time.